Hello, I'm Ed Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. We've been working with PixInsight. Uh, we've been working on a narrow band image 7822 and we're going to continue doing that. Um, this probably will run a little longer than some of the other videos <clears throat> because we're going to look at two different uh, noise reduction uh, algorithms created by uh, our, that are in the PixInsight uh, processes and uh, both of them work uh, really really good um, I favor one over the other in certain situations and we'll talk about that so let's head over to uh, Pix Insight and let me uh, get started I think this is part 19 and uh, let me share my screen which would always be good and get rid of me in this image um, so we uh, are back uh, with um, 7822 and we're going to uh, 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 talk about the HDR and multi-scale transform uh, tool here for a minute and uh, these are the settings that I generally use um, and because I'm not going to use it on this image uh, I wanted to explain why uh, it is in my processes and it's about the order that I typically use it and as you probably know uh, these processes I use from the top to the bottom uh, sometimes I have to uh, jump forward or go backwards somewhat but generally speaking this is my workflow and <coughs> excuse me um, the uh, HDR multi-scale transform tool works extremely well but it wouldn't do anything for this image. Where it works the best is in images uh, like uh, uh, the Orion Nebula because of the extreme brightness uh, in the core and then uh, the rest of the image is um, fairly tame. And so if you want to get that HDR effect, uh, this is the tool that you want to pull up for just that. And these are the settings that I typically use. Um, I will uncheck medium transform and use Gaussian and uh, I'll, I'll play around with all of these but I, I, I have favored Gaussian 11 and uh, uh, small scale 32 so I but I've played with all of them and uh, I think though as a rule of thumb if you will start out with medium transform checked and um, I think you'll probably find it works uh, just fine and no other tweaks to this will you need to make. Uh, so uh, I will be doing an image and it will be Orion. It will be a one-shot color uh, camera and I'm going to do the same processes that I use here but it's going to be with a one-shot color camera image and when we get to the HDR multi-scale transform uh, time uh, I, you'll be able to see how I apply it. So uh, as soon as I finish 7822 I'm going to start with M42 and uh, as it has been taken with the one-shot color camera and uh, show you what I do in a, uh, uh, when I use a uh, an RGB image right out of the camera. So let's put this back where it belongs. Uh, and now we're going to go into noise reduction and uh, I am a fan of both of these, ACDNR and TGV Denoise. Uh, you can find those under process, all processes. The very first process is the ACDNR. The ACD noise reduction tool works extremely well for images like the one I have. And at the very bottom, uh, well, we have unsharp mask underneath TGV Denoise, but close to the very bottom we have the other. So they're on both ends of the processes, so pretty easy to find. <clears throat> but uh, I like to save my processes with the settings I'm more inclined to use, and they become my default settings. And so uh, let's start off with the ACDNR, and let me explain why I like to use that on an image that has nebulosity from corner to corner. Uh, TG uh, TGV uh, Denoise 
has a strong edge protection feature that protects the stars. But in order to measure what that edge protection needs to be, it needs a good background reference. And if you have an image like this where there isn't any good background reference, the probably the area that comes closest to it is up here in the right upper right corner. And I am going to run uh, TGV Denoise on this image to show you how I, I use it. But uh, there is a large area of background and I'll also more than likely use the same noise reduction tool on the Orion Nebula when I uh, start my next series of tutorials using PixInsight and a one-shot color camera. So that's where it will fit nicely. But um, uh, I don't have a lot of background that doesn't have some effect from the gases and the dust and nebulosity. So I just uh, probably will lean on ACDNR to, uh, to solve the noise reduction issues here. So let's bring it up. And um, at, from the get-go, uh, I typically run with the lightness and uh, uh, checked. Um, apply lightness. These are my settings as I start out of the gate. I'm not sure if they're default settings or not, but it's what I use. Structure 2, 3x3 three three weighted average, symmetric. Um, on the bright side edge, edge protection, it does have edge protection feature for your stars and star protection. And it also has a real-time preview, but I don't like it. And the only reason why I don't like the real-time preview is I can't examine the noise reduction zoomed in. If there's a way to zoom in with the real-time preview on, that'd be great. But there is no way to zoom in, so I use my previews. By the way, I use previews on essentially every image, particularly the ones that I drizzle, because the drizzling effect, and this has been drizzled, increases the image size two times. And it's twice as large as normal, which means that some of the processes take twice as long to run. A, I don't know if it's twice as long, but they do take longer, and I, I, I figured it out. It's drizzling. Now, the undrizzled image uh, processes quickly, and this sometimes takes uh, three, four minutes more than uh, a non-drizzled image. So I'm a preview dependent kind of person with one exception. You don't want to use previews if you do run the HDR multi-scale transform because in order for HDR luminosity layers to be measured effectively, it needs the whole image to do that. And uh, if you just isolate a small area, then um, uh, as a preview, then um, the HDR, the high dynamic range feature, can't run. It can't get an effective reading from your image. So, uh, for that reason, it's the only, probably the only place where I don't use previews when I'm applying one of the PixInsight processes. So let's create a preview. Before I do that, though, uh, well, let's go ahead and create a preview, and let's put it. Um, right here so we can examine some of the background area where the noise is going to be more noticeable and we want to look at some of the effects that it's going to have on the detail uh, what little details that is in this image and I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, this image would not have a lot of detail but there are some lines running through it that give it some dynamic got some structure look and I really don't want to lose that and I probably will lose some of that running this noise reduction feature, which is one of the main reasons why I go into Photoshop, and that's to bring this back. So if I lose a little bit of this with the noise reduction, I'm going to try to recapture that when I go into Photoshop with some selective structure applications. So let's, let's get started. Uh, I want to also apply a star mask. It may not be absolutely necessary because we do have some bright side edge protection with star protect, protection checked, but I'm a little anal about this and so I'll bring up my star mask 
and I'm going to, well, I lost my star mask. It's back here, and I'm going to drag this over, and as soon as I see the box, I'll apply it, and as soon as this turns brown, I know my max mask has been applied. Uh, I don't want to see the mask, so I'm, um, let's put this to bed here. So I'm going to go up to mask, and I don't want to show it, but I do want to invert it. Now let's look at our preview, and let's take my default settings, and let's see what happens. Let's take a look and we do have some noise reduction applied and it is a little bit too much for me. But let's go in here and let's go back and forth. And you can see before, after, oh, maybe not. But again, you can notice that some of these uh, lines, although they don't have a great deal of detail, uh, I'm going to lose some of that in my uh, noise reduction application. In fact, I lose quite a bit of it. So that's what I'm going to try to re bring back in. That's what I'm going to try to bring back in Photoshop. Okay. Well, um, I like this, and I'm going to apply it but I'm not going to apply it now because I want to show you how uh, TGV Denoise works. So let's uh, uh, close down ACDNR. We can keep our preview. I'll go ahead and remove the mask and uh, return to our image. And what I want to do now is I want to create another preview and I want a little one right up in here where I have that background that uh, we talked about. Let me bring up TGV Denoise and uh, we're going to need to do two things. We're going to need to establish what the edge protection is and in order to do that I'm going to go to process and I'm going to go down to image inspection and find statistics and then I'm going to uh, bring in my image and let's my image in the preview and that is whoop I just lost it when you have so many images open that would be this now <clears throat> you want to have standard deviation activated if, if you don't, then uh, what you'll do is go over here to this, uh, I guess it's a wrench, click on it, and then uh, come down here to where standard deviation uh, is. And in, in a lot of cases, it hasn't been checked. So you'll need to check that because that's the tool that we want to use. And the red color has a reading of 2.3. 9, which is 2.4, and this is 2.33, which is 2.3, and 1.569, which is 1.6. So we want to pick red, it's the highest value, with an exponent of minus 2. So we're going to take uh, red, it has the highest value, we want to take advantage of the majority uh, of, of the edge protection and so we're going to use that value. So we don't need that now, so we're going to dial in right here 2.4 and minus 2. Now <clears throat> we're going to have a support mask. If you click on preview it'll be black and white and you'll be panicked. But we're going to have a, uh, we're going to create a mask called TGV uh, underscore mask. You can call it anything you want, but that's what I typically call that. It's going to come from, it's going to be a luminosity mask. So let's just bring up our luminosity mask 
and let's drag it off to the side and let's put our loom mask back and let's just call this that's why I keep all of my mask I'm going to likely use them again and we're going to call this T uh, T G V I can't V underscore mask okay so now we have our mask for our edge protection for our stars and we're going to put that over here and so <clears throat> Let's get to our preview. Our mask never moved, did it? So let's get to our preview, not of the uh, star, but let's get right here. And let's make sure that we've gone back, uh, we have to before we applied the other. So let's apply it. going to run its course. Okay, it's finished running. <coughs> and um, as you can see, it's had a uh, insane effect on my... Uh, that looks fine. But when you go to the corners here, say, uh, uh that ain't going to work. So when that happens, uh, I'm going to... Um, Increase this. Let's try it to four and let's drag that over. Well, it finished and it didn't help, and, and you probably know why. You're probably uh, screaming at me, uh, Ed, you didn't apply the uh, mask, which I didn't do. So uh, let's try it again. And we're going to grab our mask. I made it, but I didn't uh, apply it. I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. All right, we know it's on there now. And we're going to uh, invert that mask. And actually, we don't need to with uh, take that back. We don't need to do that with this tool. So let's go back to our preview and let's uh, now run it and let's go back to minus two first. Since we now have our mask and let's run it. Okay, uh, we got to run and it makes a lot more sense now. Uh, you got to have a mask but here is uh, with the application applied and no yes no yes no yes and our stars are remaining the same so it has applied a layer of um, noise reduction um, just kind of look in this area right here as I uh, go back and forth with my preview and so what I want to do now, I want to go over to where my detail is. And I hardly call it detail, but it's, uh, there's, uh, it's probably had as much of a effect on reducing the, some of the detail as, as did ACDNR. But I tell you what, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. It's ready to go. And so I'm going to go back here to um, my main image and I'm going to drag the process triangle and drop it on top of my image. And it's going to apply TGV denoise to this image. I guess I must have luckily got into an area of some uh, genuine background 
to uh, enable to get that good edge protection. If for some reason you still see some uh, interesting effects of uh, similar kind of to what you saw when I didn't have the mask, then um, reduce the strength of your edge protection some and uh, that generally uh, helps it go to minus three or minus two and you can always take the strength slider up but um, I would advise you to uh, kind of stay with these defaults as you start out okay it's running and let's give it a few seconds and we'll be putting this to, s to bed okay it's finished running it's uh, its algorithm and noise reduction has been applied let's uh, take a look at that and I'm impressed so this is a case where I typically would have used AC DNR because of the nebulosity and, and really because I didn't think that there was any uh, really good uh, or, or defined area of the background that I could uh, count on that didn't have nebulosity in it but uh, uh, it was good enough to give us some good star protection so along with the uh, with the uh, TGV uh, uh, mask uh, that, that did work so we're going to take our mask off and we can get rid of the previews we can just go up here preview and uh, close delete all previews and so with that uh, we're going to uh, identify well this as having added T G V denoise and we'll pick up uh, and I'm going to bring that down here and so we are about to run out of some real estate but we're also about done so let me bring this down here and okay well folks let's put our mask back and uh, this will uh, take us to the uh, part where we're going to be looking at uh, uh, some unsharp mask and uh, we're actually going to run uh, and give a, and take a look at uh, multilinear uh, transformation, which is something that I typically only do uh, in the uh, linear state. But uh, I picked up this idea from uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Adam Block, where you run multilinear transform and uh, you disable layer one and uh, you apply uh, these effects to layers two and three or if it's too much sharpening lower it uh, to somewhat an experiment and we're going to be doing that in the next video along with uh, my unsharp mask uh, process so uh, we'll see you then uh, don't forget to uh, uh, Give me a, uh, a consider uh, liking and, uh, and subscribing if you can. Click the bell for content uh, when new content is added, and uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, so, guys, we'll catch you later. Happy holidays, and uh, catch you on the next video.